Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Tea Dottles. It's time for another Tutorial Tuesday. What are we doing today? Well, today I'm going to show you an easy fix for a t-shirt that is too snug around the midsection, kind of like mine is. See? Yeah. Yeah. I could use a little more room in there. I don't like things to be showing all my my rolls and stuff. So, but I really like this shirt. I got it at Joann's. This is supposed to be a large. I'm thinking it's probably a large in junior sizing or something. I don't know. It is a little snug on my arms, but I can deal with that. I can't deal with this. I don't like it. So, I'm going to show you how to fix that so that you can still wear a t-shirt you may love even if it's too tight here. Actually, if it's too tight up here, you could do this all the way up to the armpit, what I'm going to do. But I'm just going to do it from about here down. What I'm going to do is take some knit fabric, make me a little wedge so that this part gets wider on each side. Then my shirt will be truly one of a kind, right? So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, you can do this with a, a straight pen or I like to use these little clover clips. I'm trying to cover it up. There we go. Yeah. Like this. Just so I don't accidentally poke myself. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you got somebody else to help you, it may be easier, but I'm probably going to go to about right here on this. Um, I could go, like I said, I could just go all the way to the armpit and make it wider. It is a little bit snug up here, but it's not too bad. So, I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to put this little marker right there, just like that. See? I'm not going to mark the other side because I can fold this half to see, fold this in half to see where the other side goes. So, I'm gonna pause this so I can change my shirt right quick, and then I will show you how I'm gonna cut this and add the wedge. Okay, now I've got my shirt. I'm taking my shirt off, put a regular shirt on, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> um, and so, uh, this is the mark. This is how far up I want to go. I'm going to now mark this with a pen just because I want to turn this inside out. So if you mark it with the pen in the first place, you don't have to do this. But it's just hard to see that pinch mark on the inside with just the clip. So I'm going to turn this inside out. Here we go. Turn this back around like this. All right. So. I can see where my pen is. I can see the shimmer a little bit. So now I'm gonna grab my chalk, my Taylor's chalk, uh, and just put me a little mark right there. Just like that. Now I can take my pen out. So if you use the pen in the beginning, you don't have to do all that swippy swapping. I just like to use the clip so I don't poke myself in the midst of all of this. So, now I'm going to take the shirt, hold it right in half. Make sure I'm aligning all my hems and stuff like that, right? Then, I'm going to mark the other side. This is just going to help me know where I want that to stop at. So, so I'm going to think about too. This shirt has a high-low hem. It's longer in the back than it is in the front. So when I add my piece, let's turn and look at this seam right here. When I add my piece, I want to make sure that the bottom edge of it follows this. That way, uh, it just looks like it was intentional okay 
So you can try to take out all of this surging if you want. You certainly could do that. Um, but then you have to take out this hem to get the rest of that surging, surged seam out. So what I'm gonna do is just grab my scissors. And I know this is gonna be scary for some of y'all, but we're just gonna cut this right out of there, okay? Right up to the point of our mark. So I'm gonna go down one side of the seam. I'm trying to leave as much as I can behind. So I'm just cutting the seam all the way up to that point. Ta-da! Yeah. So if you want, you can leave the seam in on one side, but I'm going to cut out the whole seam. So now I gotta cut down the other side. And It just works better with scissors. Um, this is at an awkward angle. But the rotary cutter is not going to work too great because you cut, you got that other side of the shirt over there. Unless you slide your cutting mat under the shirt somehow. So I've cut the seam out just like that. And I'm going to cut just under that line. My seam is gone. So now I have this, right? <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And yeah, it, sometimes you're most likely going to cut out this little tag. See, this is supposed to be an extra large, y'all. I thought this was a large. That's really... Ooh, that must be junior size, and it's got to be. So, let's see. Cut up the where did my mark go? There it is. Make sure you're paying attention to where your mark is. It's not the end of the world if you go past your mark, but you just have to add a longer wedge. Here we go. And snip. All right, both sides are open. Just having it like that is gonna make something fit better, right? If you put this on, it's not gonna be tight at all because you got that big slit down the side. But I really don't wanna be walking around with a big slit down the side of my shirt with my belly shining. It's just not my thing. So, <laughs> we're gonna make a little wedge for this. Something to think about before you choose a fabric to put in here. You want to pick something that's not, see this is almost a tissue weight uh, t-shirt material, jersey. Um, and this one, this one's a little bit heavier, but it's not so heavy that it's going to drag down the fabric, if that makes sense. You don't want to put like a, a super heavy knit in here when when you have a super lightweight t-shirt okay you want to pick something that's about the same weight um, so this is this is close it's not um, it's a little bit heavier than this one but it's not like a it's not something that's gonna weigh it down okay all right so you cannot just sew this and then cut a wedge this away. Because what's going to happen is it's going to hang weird. Because you got something on a bias and something that's not on a bias. So, you want a wedge that is on the bias both ways, if that makes any sense. So, I'm going to grab one side of my shirt. I'll put it here. There we go. Try to lay it out sort of flat. Um, 
and I'm just going to pull it apart. You can measure this if you want to. Um, this is a good three or four inches. Let's see. Okay, so it's five inches. But, <laughs> which I probably don't need that much. So, um, but what I have to think about is I gotta have a seam allowance, right? I'm gonna use a fairly narrow seam allowance, the edge of my presser foot, which is gonna be, um, actually I'm gonna use my serger to do this but you can do it on the sewing machine. I'll show you how. But um, I'm going to use about 3 eighths of an inch for my seam allowance. So that means I've got 3 quarters of an inch coming off of it. So that's actually going to be 4 and a quarter wide by the time I um, serge it. So, but that's going to be on both sides. So that's something to think about too. That would be me adding four and a quarter inches to each side of this shirt. I don't think I need more than a four and a quarter inches for the whole shirt. So I'm, I just want this to be about two inches. So I'm just gonna adjust this until, well, until it's two and three quarters so I can account for my seam. So there it is right there. And then I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my fabric. Well, I'm gonna have to remeasure that, y'all, but I'm gonna lay my fabric. I'm trying to make sure that the grain of the fabric is still straight across here, as straight as it can be, because it's gonna be curved a little bit because of the hem. But this will just help things hang better than having one side a bias and one side not because one side will be stretchier than the other if you do that and that's what will happen all right Let me get this straight and the other thing to think about when you do this is up here at the top you want to overlap this top portion by at least your seam allowance I usually do it more I usually leave a good inch or so up there because once I cut, once I mark this and cut it, things don't want to be still. Then I'm going to uh, have my shape that I need. I'm only going to do this on one side and then I will have it for both sides. Alright, so this is really great for remnants and stuff. Just trying to make sure this is flat as I can get it. Okay, so need to remeasure, make sure. I need to bring this in some, just a little bit, so I can get about where I want to be. Okay. Here we go. So now I'm gonna mark. I'm gonna mark right down the edge of that. Just and with knit fabric, you kind of do that little dash and dot thing because it, if you just press down, it stretches the fabric. So that's what I usually do, just like that. So I don't know if y'all gonna be able to, and then I also I'm gonna mark. the line that needs to be my hem. And I'm just going to try to fit that in there. There we go. So when I take this away, I've got, I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but I have a little wedge shape and I can take my ruler, mark it out more definitively just well I'm not gonna use my ruler because this is not gonna be necessarily completely straight because you're working with a knit it may have some curve to it to fit in there right there we go yeah maybe I can see that better I don't know 
I'll see when I play the video back. Hopefully y'all can see that. I just traced that opening basically the size I wanted to. But now I gotta add my seam allowance. So I'm gonna use my seamstress ruler. Well, um, got this from Dritz. I really like it because you can see through it and it's broken down into eighths of an inch. So it makes it real easy when you're trying to make new seams or seam allowances. So, I'm going to find, if this is not completely straight, I'll use this end. I'm going to find my one, two, three, three eighths, which is what I wanted. And I'm just going to mark. So now I'm marking the line that I will actually cut. So I need this to be bigger to make sure I had seam allowances and all that good stuff. Okay. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Marking, marking, marking. And you're going to want to come up past this to make a longer point to make sure you get into that point up there at the top. We go three eighths. Mark, mark, mark. Mark, mark, mark. And keep on marking. All right. Just make sure you go up. That's curled under. To a point beyond. So you make sure you have enough fabric at that point at the top. Okay? So now for the hem. Here's a little secret. If you don't want to hem this, you don't have to. It will roll up just like this. It will not fray. It will not come apart. So if you don't mind having a raw edge that rolls up, you can certainly leave it that way. Um, it actually, I would, so I'm, I think I'm going to do that just to make it easier. I'm going to actually make this at least the width of my seam allowance longer just so that when it does roll up, it doesn't try to pull up the bottom of the hem with it. So I'm going to make it that much longer. And I'm not going to put a seam, a hem in it. You can put a hem in it if you want. Um, I would put that in before you sew the wedge in. So you can line everything up. But I'm just going to leave mine. It's a t-shirt. I'm just going to leave it unfinished. Another extra special detail to the bottom. Okay, so now I have my first wedge. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And then I can use it as a template for my second wedge on the other side. There we go. my wedges. You see it already wants to curl because that is the nature of a knit. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this over face down to do the second one because the curve is different on the other side, right? It's the opposite. So you don't want to lay it face up. You don't want it. You don't want the back to the face. You want the faces together to cut your opposite piece. Okay. And I can just use this little bit that's left over here because it is big enough and I can and you also want to make sure you're maintaining your uh, grain line at the bottom. 
that just helps things hang better and plus putting it upside down is going to make it easier it's going to make this knit want to lay flatter now if you don't want to cut your fabric like that you can certainly put a piece of cardboard or template material under it trace you a piece onto it and then you'll have a template to use for all your t-shirts if you need or for any t-shirt that may be tight I don't do that normally because you never know what you're gonna get if you buy a t-shirt from the store you just don't know it's gonna be too big or too small even if you buy the same size it's just a crap shoot <laughs> all right here we go and some people are intimidated by sewing knits when actually knits are probably in my opinion some of the easiest to show, sew beyond like a cotton quilting fabric which is not super comfortable to wear it can be comfortable to wear but you have to allow for buttons and snaps when you sew those because there's no stretch to cottons like that I think that knits are very forgiving because you just have to make sure you're using the right tools to sew the stretch all right now I have two pieces and I know that the one with the markings on it still goes on this side that's still facing me. That's an important thing to remember because you got opposite sides going on, okay? Well, actually, <laughs> I'm glad I thought about that before I did that. Where did that other piece go? Because my shirt's inside out and this is face up, this one needs to go on the other side. So because this one would actually fit here because I want my pretty side to match the outside of the shirt. Okay? So. I allowed for a little bit of curl. So I'm going to hang that down there. Grab my pins. All right. This is definitely something I would pin because you want to make sure that wedge gets in there correctly. Being that it's knit, you can finagle it a little bit, but if you finagle it too much, weird things are going to happen when you put your shirt back on. All right. Pin, pin, pin. Alright, now that I've got that side pinned, I'm going to go ahead and pin the other side. I haven't pinned my point up there yet. So I'm going to check to see how things are looking, how they hang before I sew it down. That's an important thing to do, especially when you're dealing with knits, because they can, you don't get that in there in a good manner. It can, like I said before. Do funny things.
All right. So, got that pinned in. Toot, toot. And then, this is this seam is coming apart a little bit right here because of, uh, well, because I cut the seam. <laughs> but when I get up here, I'm going to pivot at that corner and come back down the other side, which I will show y'all in a moment. But first, I'm going to turn my shirt out like this and... I can see that I let this hang down more on this side than I did the other side. Well, y'all can't see that. Look. Okay, so I can see I got a problem because this is hanging down more than this side. So I got to make an adjustment to get this right. Um, but if I just pick this up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see that. I can see that it hangs pretty nicely. It's not too bad. I just need to adjust the hem. Um, and things will be great. And a matter of fact, I may... This hem is so hefty. I'll probably just sew this. I'm going to have to tuck this under. Or it's going to be... You're going to see it because it's going at an angle. Um, I'll tuck it under just like that. So... Mm -hmm. I may just cut that off even. Leave my raw edge. It won't curl very much, but it'll be fine. Um, like I said, you can add a hem to it if you want to. I just don't feel like doing that. Because uh, it's just a t-shirt I'm going to be wearing around. And it just, having a raw edge like that, I like it. So, now it's time for me to go sew. Hey, y'all. I'm over here at my sewing machine. I'm trying to get a good angle on the front of it. Now I have a Brother Project Runway Limited Edition whatever. This is one of my machines but this is what I'm show sewing with today and I wanted to show you some options if you don't have a serger. Okay, You do not want to use a straight stitch for knits. So that's a no. Okay, You can use this here but this is better for uh, like heavy duty knits where you're going to have a lot of stretch and stuff in it. Um, it's like a triple stitch. This one right here is an awesome stitch for knits. It's kind of an angled zigzag. Um, I like this because it's not as wide as a regular zigzag. But if you don't have this one in particular, you could adjust your zigzag to just be smaller because I find that when you use too wide of a spread and length between the stitches on a zigzag stitch on knits, you get gaps in your seam. So I like this one here, if you have that on your machine. There's also this zigzag stitch, which does three stitches per line in the zigzag. So that's a good one for stretch, especially because it puts in um, like... Three, it just gives you more stretch. And what, why you want these kind of stitches versus a straight stitch is that if your stitch doesn't stretch, then you, when your fabric stretches, it's going to pop your stitches. And that's not what we want. So since this is just a side vent in a t-shirt, we'll have to worry about that too much because the whole purpose of this is making it looser so that it's not so tight so it doesn't sh stretch over things as much. So... I'm going to use uh, my number five, um, and I don't want my width set to five. That's pretty wide. I'm going to take it down to probably 3.5, and then this is the length of the stitch. So this is how far it is between each zigzag. Right now it's at a one. That's probably a little too small. So, I'm going to take it up to at least a 1.6. Between a 1.6 and a 2. I'm going to leave it 1.6 for now. Um, so, that those are options to use your machine uh, to sew knits, okay? The other thing you want to make sure of 
and you're not going to be able to see that over here is that you want to use a knit needle okay and usually you can tell if a needle is for knits because it'll have that kind of gold look at the end of it um, that tends to run across most brands Singer is especially good for this I'm trying to get that to focus um, the color at the bottom indicates what size knit so this is a hundred was it 100 over 16 so it's for heavier knits and the one I have in my machine is a 90 over 14 was about mid-weight knits okay and then they have another color it'll have a different color for each size if you can remember that I have to look every time but I also have numbered put numbers on my little pin cushion here and this is only for my sewing machine needles so then I can remember what this needle is and that it's been in use so I just wrote a little note as to what type of uh, needle it is and what size it is so that's what helps keep me on track <laughs> if it's not a fresh needle out of a pack so and you can see my little my little dog over there that's the one that's always barking lucky tell everybody hey you gonna say hey you got nothing to say right now uh -huh. talk to him I guess he has nothing to say right now so <laughs> we're gonna see if I can film this me sewing this this little wedge in let's see if I can adjust this and hopefully you can see what's going on when I do this without me bumping the camera well, this is a little awkward to have people in my sewing space so when I sew this I'm going to start on one side go to the point and then come back up so I've got I wish I was a way to make this light not so oh that makes it worse Ooh. okay so I've got my presser foot is aligning with this edge here I don't think that's picking up on there but um so I'm gonna go ahead and take out this first pin and what you want to make sure is that you hold the tails like the tails of the thread you want to don't pull on them just hold them so they don't get sucked down in the machine when you first start so I'm gonna go just right down like this and this may be a little too wide for this stitch but you can see how that looks maybe I'll show you when I get done sewing but we're just gonna go right down this and y'all I have my speed on my machine in the midpoint so I don't go too fast <laughs> so I usually have my pedal to the metal when I'm sewing so we're just gonna go straight down get this turned right that's something to pay attention to when you're sewing on a garment that's already together don't sew the other half together <laughs> into your seam As you can see I stop and I adjust it's a little difficult because my little camera holders in the way but I always stop and adjust while I'm sewing um, even if I'm showing one long seam I, I, I do that one thing you want to make sure of when you put when you're doing knits don't pull on it like that don't do that 
just hold it with your finger and guide it. All right, you don't need to pull on it because that can cause you trouble. And as you can see, I'm using a regular foot on here. If you have a walking foot or a knit foot, which I'll try to show you when I get done with this, that will help you even more if you're new to sewing with knits. Um, for something like that, this I don't normally take it out if I'm sewing a whole knit garment. I will change my foot out. But we're getting to the point of this. Okay. And this is going to get a little weird. It's going to be okay though. So I'm going to take this. This is the seam. And I'm hoping y'all be able to see this whenever I look back at this. But there's the seam right there. Right? So. I'm kind of pulling from the other side a little bit. Where I've got it pinned. And I don't want that seam laid open like that. So I'm going to. You can certainly put a few stitches in there to hold it better. If you feel better like doing that. I'm just going to push it over and then I'm only going to sew up to the seam so when my needle hits that seam I'm going to stop the seam in the shirt and here we go and you may be thinking well how am I supposed to know that well if you watch on the side of your foot you will see let me see if I can move this you can see the seam okay and you may want to just take a stitch until you get right there where did my presser foot lever go That's right there <laughs> and if you lift up your seam your foot you can see where that dent starts usually and I can see that I can put about two more stitches in there so then you pick up your foot and you're gonna rotate uh oh gonna rotate everything everything gets rotated around this part's gonna be a little bit tricky because you just gotta make sure everything's right you want to make sure this tail goes under there. And you want to make sure when you're picking up this other side that you're actually aligning things. And you may want to pop another pin in there. Um, I usually don't. But that's just me because I've been sewing for a while. Now, this is really awkward when I'm trying to do this on camera. I feel like I can't remember what I'm doing. I keep hitting the, the camera itself. Alright. Alright. I'm going to grab one of my favorite tools. A purple thing. And that is what it's called. Because it's got like a little tiny finger on one end. And you can grab stuff and pull it where your finger don't want to go. Yay! Alright, so I want to make sure. Where is my seam? There it is, okay. I want to make sure that that... Mm, seam is going out flat like that. Okay, and I want to try to get all of this as straight as I can. And sometimes I will lift the needle up some with the hand crank. I don't take the needle completely out of the fabric though. It just will give you, help you maneuver the um, fabric a little bit. satisfied with where everything is so I'm going to start sewing down this side. 
and that lumpy sound was probably it going over the the seam of the shirt. We hope it's not the end of the world if it's not. So make sure your shirt parts are not up under there where they shouldn't be. And keep on sewing down this side. Now, turning that corner is turning that corner is a little bit easier if you're using a straight stitch. But like I said, when you're sewing with knits, it's best to use something that has stretch. No pin cushion. Yep, look at me. I'm going all off the side. It's not the end of the world. Uh, that's what I get for sewing and not looking. There we go. Now, if you're using one of these specialty stitches, it's not going to actually back stitch. It puts a few stitches at the end, like that, to lock that in. So, let's see how that did. Turn it right side out. So, look at there almost perfect I did get a little bit of a pucker Whoop. up at the top right there but since this is a knit that's really not gonna be that noticeable I'll iron that and it'll be good as new look at this and quit bumping you all around so now I forgot to tap my. I forgot to turn that under when I sewed. But what I can do, you can leave this right like this. Trim off your hem, however you want to do it. Where's my other scissors? Like a little piece hanging out right there I can just trim that off too that is part of the original hem but it's knit it'll be fine so <laughs> if you don't like this flapping around like this you just have to stitch it down some more I didn't so far because this is longer than that right but when you fold it under it's not uh, you can just put a few uh, hand stitches in there if you don't want that flopping around like that. Otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. Let's see. I'm going to do this other one and then I'll try it back on and we'll see how it looks. Okay, I finished sewing both little wedges in my shirt. You can see here and here. Um, made it fit a little better. It's not quite so tight. I still see my rolls a little bit, but probably could have made the wedges a little bit bigger, but this will be, this feels more comfortable to me to wear than before. It's got a little bit more room in it. Like I said, I probably could have made those wedges a little bit bigger, but that is just an easy way to make a t-shirt bigger. Well, it's easy to me, but it may not be easy to someone who doesn't sew very much. But, um, yeah. I, uh, it didn't really take me that long. The only thing that took me a long time is because, I'm going to tell you one thing. You may be tempted to sew up one side, then stop, then sew up the other side, and then do the, the little pointy part. Don't do that. Because what's going to happen is it's going to stretch different up the other side, and then it's not going to meet right at the top. Because I did that, even though I know better than to do that. 
<laughs> and of course I had problems and I had to take my stitches out which is not an easy thing to do with knits especially if you're using the triple zigzag stitch that I was using so that's something to think, to think about it's much better to go up the side get your point straight while it's on the machine still turn and come back down uh, you're just gonna be happier with the way it turns out you will have to be ribbon stitches out of uh, the knit fabric I also said hold on just one second I told y'all I would show you a walking foot and a knit foot so this is what a walking foot looks like for my machine um, they may look a little different depending on the machine you have this little thing goes up on that bar above your needle and what it does is that little plastic part inside there it has teeth on it that little white part and when this pushes it 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 has teeth so it grips the top fabric while the feed dog on the bottom with teeth grips the bottom fabric and it pulls it through more evenly and that's what a walking foot does that's why it's a good thing to use for knits especially if you're whole, sewing a whole knit garment um, although I do find this works better on uh, heavier knits uh, t-shirt knits I don't like to use this one as much um, I like to use this knit foot which basically does the same thing it's just a simpler design um, and I like this when I'm doing garments better because I can see more of the edges especially when I'm going around sleeve hems and stuff versus this big old thing and this thing this part hits the bar and you can see it kind of levers up a little bit well, maybe you can see that yeah and that makes this stay back a little bit and move better with the feed dogs and feed the fabric more evenly through just like this does it just doesn't grip on the fabric itself so I find with thinner knits that that using this it can grip too much and it could bunch things up sometimes um, that's my opinion anyway for what that's worth but this little thing it's called a knit foot this is a snap-on foot um, I know this works with my brother machine and my uh, singer machines so uh, this is how I keep my sewing machine feet in this little box which is all part of this little system here I will link to a blog post where I talk about this this is actually for bead storage but it works awesome for snap-on feet for your sewing machine so I highly recommend it I have two of these already because I also use it for small notions sewing notions so um yeah I think that's it for today's tutorial Tuesday I hope y'all learned some things um, maybe y'all would like to try doing that to one of your shirts like I said this is a pretty easy thing in my opinion the only tricky thing is getting that little point in there um, and you can stitch over the top of this if you want to to help hold that seam down a little bit so it doesn't kick out at the bottom I'm not gonna worry about it because this is a t-shirt this will be a t-shirt that I wear when I go thrifting or to my favorite DIY or craft store uh, it could possibly eventually become one that I wear when I'm doing my painting because uh, just makes me feel more inspired I guess to wear this so that makes I make things yeah so that's it for today if you like the video give it a thumbs up uh, think about subscribing um, if you have any ideas for anything you might want to see for a future tutorial Tuesdays please let me know in the comments down below um, I, uh, I try to do what I think people might want to see but feedbacks nice it's always nice to know what people actually want to see so I'll see y'all next time